Hey guys, this is Jeremy with another episode of Abolitionist Abstractions. It's been a while since I've done one of these, um, almost a year, I think, at least since the last one I put out. But I've recently been inspired by my friend Nick Hazelton, from, formerly from the Anarcho Yakitalism podcast, now with his new project, Yakin' with Nick, where he just goes on and does a couple of, you know, half hour, 40 minute episodes a week completely unscripted, completely unedited, and just completely off the cuff. And I, uh, I really commend him for, uh, for taking that step and uh, putting himself out there like that. Because as he says during most episodes, he considers editing them because he stumbles over his words and he forgets where he's going with things. But he's trying to leave it as raw as possible. And uh, it takes a lot of courage because, you know, a lot of us who do podcasting and stuff like that, well, we edit a lot of our work because we want to make it sound as, as good as we can. And not just from an audio perspective, but also because, well, we don't want to sound like idiots. So, Nick, if you happen to hear this, my friend, uh, thank you for encouraging me to uh, start doing this more often and just uh, getting some more of my feelings off my chest and not just in a show setting. So the reason I'm doing one today is last night we recorded an episode of the Seeds of Liberty, which will be coming out this Monday with Sterling Lujan, who is, uh, I consider a friend and a really, really smart guy, really interesting guy. Uh, I've known Sterling for a couple of years now, and we were discussing his relational anarchism that he's been working with for the past year or so, I guess. And... Part of that conversation was the attacks that he receives from other people in the community and as well as people like myself receive from others in this community because we have ideas that are a little bit different than theirs. Uh, we don't necessarily agree with everything they claim to be absolute truths, such as, you know, there's no dealing with leftists or... If you disagree with any aspect of what we're talking about, that necessarily makes you a communist. Well, this shit is getting out of hand. And if it wasn't apparent enough to me last night during our conversation with Sterling, it became really fucking apparent about two seconds after we signed off and uh, I hopped on Facebook to check something and immediately got into a discussion with somebody over a meme I had posted yesterday that was a, 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 a Mark Sterner uh, themed meme that uh, essentially was, you know, the, the four panels, little guy finding a spider and saying, oh, look, I'm going to go set you free. And the next panel says, because all life is precious. And the third panel, the spider sitting in his hand with a, you know, with one of those blank cap, you know, blank uh, clouds that you can put, um, put words in. So I added, rights are a spook. And then the fourth panel is the, the little kid getting very, very mad and squeezing and crushing the spider because he's been offended by what's been said. Um, and there's a little picture of the, the sterner Pepe in the corner. And of course, this got a lot of criticism because immediately, uh, it, uh, the, one of the first comments I, and on one of the groups I posted was, the comment was, fuck that commie. So of course, I naturally asked, what commie are you referring to? Because this was a perfect example of exactly what Sterling and I and Dave and Andre had been talking about, not even minutes before this, where somebody doesn't really understand another individual or their position and just assumes that because it doesn't agree with what you believe to be true, that you that, that person must be the exact opposite of you. Now, this is something that I have taken to calling residual statism because it's this very black and white thinking that most people that are still stuck in the statist paradigm, at least in the mindset, not physically, because unfortunately most of us are still physically in that paradigm, whether we want to be or not. Um, but it, from, a, from, a, from a mental standpoint, people who are still in that paradigm, who still accept government for, for what they believe it is and that it's necessary and yada, 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 they tend to have a very black and white set of thinking. That's why it's so easy to invoke the 
divide and conquer tactics and have them, you know, the Republicans, the Democrats, the conservatives, the liberals, who, whichever group, whichever variation of them you want to you want to look at. That's why they're always pitted against one another and, and why it's done so easily, because there's just constant black and white. It, you have to be one or the other. Well, unfortunately, folks, that's not how life works. Um, you know, on top of that, Sterner was not a commie. He was not best friends with Engels and Marx, as this individual tried to tell me repeatedly, even though I kept pointing out, no, no, Marx actually hated Stirner. Stirner drove him up a fucking wall. Marx spent like essays and essays and essays attempting to refute like little things that Stirner would write because Stirner was clearly in his head, which is highly ironic because what Stirner talks about most often is spooks. And most people also misinterpret that when somebody like myself calls something a spook, they think that I haven't looked into it or I just haven't thought about it enough, but they don't really, rea- which is even funnier because they don't realize that what a spook is, is just something that you have in your head that you've given way too much power to. So when they tell you to think about it more, what they're telling you is to become more spooky without even realizing it. That's the funny fucking thing. But anyway, so yeah, Marx went insane almost trying to refute Stirner because he was so mad about the stuff Stirner was writing. And Stirner really didn't care. He didn't pay that much attention to Marx afterwards. So people have this misconception of, well, not only Stirner, but so many other people and so many other ideas. I mean, unfortunately, this individual who who attacks me like that, and then even after I pointed out these facts, and it just he just wanted to keep twisting it and going, well, okay, so he's commie-like. And it's like, well, no, now you're backtracking. He's still not a commie. The communists hated him. You know, this is, this, this is the same type of person that will also scream about somebody like, uh, and I'm, I know I'm going to butcher his pronunciation, the pronunciation of his name, because I always do, but Joseph Proud, uh, Proudon, however you actually pronounce that, who was the one who originally came up with the property is theft line. Well, not only do a lot of communists and um, other people of that ilk run around and still make that quote like it's still valid that Proudon said it, um, but others attack Proudon for saying that and go and automatically dismiss anything he have to say without bothering to check to realize towards the end of his life, he completely reversed his position on that because he realized he was wrong. Um, This is the mistake a lot of people fall into with rejecting information because of the source. Now, I'm a little rusty on these, but I believe that's one of the terms for that is called the genetic fallacy, where you automatically assume that that everything is either good or bad because of where it comes from. So the opposite of that would be the same type of people who take everything, say somebody like Ron Paul says as gospel, because, well, it's good. It's Ron Paul is good. So if he says it, it must be good. No, it doesn't work like that way either. You know, there's always the joke about about Hitler because he was a painter and stuff like that, and he had good qualities. Well, yeah, there are good things that evil people do. There are... Uh, good ideas that people that normally have bad ideas do have, you know, that saying the sun shines on a dog's ass every now and then, or, you know, or, or the, you know, broken clocks right twice a day, you know, it's like, but again, these people miss that whole idea, which is frankly, very disconcerting because most of these individuals who fall into these traps, especially the ones here in the anarchist and libertarian communities, are the same type of people who so proudly proclaim that they are now anarchists and or libertarians or whatever they call themselves because of logic and because they think outside the box and because they've escaped this paradigm. You haven't escaped shit if you're still having these same fucking arguments with people and not realizing your blatant mistakes and your blatant leaps of logic. And it's just frustrating beyond belief because I've... You know, I've been on this side of the fence, as I refer to it, for, you know, it's, it's, it's going on four or five years now. And I've seen, which is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very long period of time, but there's more and more people coming into this move, the movement community, whatever, uh, every day. So, you know, you quickly become one of the uh, senior members at this point. And 
I've I've watched a lot of crap go down and I've watched a lot of idiotic arguments and I've participated in a lot of idiotic arguments. And, and this is something we touched on on the show last night that, you know, I said it. I I was like this for a very long time. I was very angry. I mean, I'm, I'm still angry. I You know, the, the angry young man is my theme song for a reason. Um, but I am not as quick to anger in these conversations anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm much quicker to walk away from them because... It, the people are telegraphing their moves and and their their quote unquote arguments so well that I can just see them coming from a mile away and there's just no point you know and and that's what that that's what the point of our conversation with Sterling was last night that's the whole point of his relational anarchism is about trying to make connections with people and actually have conversations before you even get into the ideologies and the differences thereof but unfortunately, far too many of us, and as I said last night, and I will say again right now, I was guilty of this many, many, many times over. And, you know, I'll still fall back into it every now and then, but I've made a very, I've tried to make a very concerted effort for the past, you know, eight to 12 months now to just try to back off and and not fall into that anymore and just not even engage and try to focus more on what it is I can do to make myself freer right now and hopefully make some other people freer too, you know, not just myself and my family, but, you know, I'm, I'm working on ideas like what Derek bros and, and those guys are doing down in Texas with the Texas freedom grounds and trying to set up these freedom cells. Like friends of mine and I have had ideas like that too. And we see people like Derek out there actually doing it and it encourages us. And it's like, well, okay, Let's focus on this instead. Let's actually try to get somewhere instead of spending all of our time on social media arguing with one another and just bashing the crap out of one another. Because the reality is, folks, regardless of what stripe of anarchism you may attach yourself to or whether you attach, you know, whether there's a different term you give yourself, if you are somebody who believes to 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 the fullest extent that the state the government, all of these things are actually unnecessary and that it, societies could form without them. If you are that type of person, well, the fact is we are, people like ourselves, are severely fucking outnumbered. So to have these further divisions and have people continue to be at each other's throats and not even willing to have conversations with one another, even if it's about something outside of the anarchy slash liberty slash freedom sphere, if you're not even willing to have conversations with these people and you're going to isolate yourselves into these further and further groups because you've convinced yourself that your ideology is the correct one and everybody else is wrong and you're better off insulating yourself from that garbage, you're not going to get anywhere. None of us are. You know, the all of the estimates that are given, I usually hear the high-end estimate from a lot of people, and this is people that have been in this movement for decades now, you know, the people that were here long before me, long before most of us finally figured all this shit out, who have said there has been this gigantic upswell in the past, five, you know, especially since uh, the the Ron Paul thing uh, in 2008 and then again in 2012, there's been more and more push. So basically, really the past five plus years, there's been a surge. And I've heard this from multiple people who've been around this, around this community for a very long time. There has definitely been a surge in that time. However, even with that surge, you know, the most generous numbers is still, there's maybe a million of us here in the United States, maybe. You know, I'd like to think there's more, but, you know, that sounds like a safe estimate, a million. So we're still outnumbered, what, 300, uh, 330 to one? <laughs> if you take that 330 to one and then you take that one and then you divide it even further and further and further, and then you're not even willing to work with other people to try to attain the goals that you wish to reach, you're not going to get anywhere. Because the statism, the status paradigm is still going to exist. It's still going to oppress us in, in many different ways. And uh, we're not going to get any freer. You know, I, I said, I used to say this a long time ago, and then I backed off it, and I realized I never should have, and I, I probably should have stuck with this the whole time, and I maybe I wouldn't have been con so confused. But I used to take the position that I'll work with just about anybody as long as their goal is to see the end of the belief in the state. 
and what that means for once, you know, if, if and when that occurs, what that means then, we'll deal with that then. If they have a totally different view of economics than I do and they don't, you know, we can't get along, then we find different communities to live in and work that way. But we need to get there first, folks. And continuing this insane, illogical, and quite frankly, inane bullshit is not helping. So everybody out there can continue to, you know, you want to stay in your little echo chambers, you want to continue bashing people because their ideas are slightly different than yours, or um, even vastly different than yours. It's, it's one thing to attack ideas, you know, that's something we're all supposed to be trained to do that, you know, to attack ideas, not the character. Well, too many people fail that lesson, number one. Number two, but even when they attack the ideas, most of the time, people are attacking ideas that they don't even really know. They've just been told by somebody else. This is something else I run into constantly. You know, people who attack agorism, but have never read a word of Konkin. People who attack Sterner, but have never read a word of his writings. People who bash communists left and right. And, and before, you know, in before you commie. No, no, I quite fully understand the history of communism. I quite understand the death and destruction that state communism has brought on the world. Believe me, I am quite aware. However, it's one thing to port, point to historical instances and say, see there, look what happened. It is quite another to continually disparage an ideology or an idea without having any more knowledge than some historical examples and what some other people have told you. If you haven't read the works of people like Marx and Engels and all those guys, if you haven't actually read the works yourselves, you probably shouldn't be you, uh, you know, piling on because you don't really know what you're fucking talking about. You know, same goes for anybody else. Same goes for communists who constantly rag on Rothbard and Mises and anybody, you know, if you haven't read the words yourself or listened to an audiobook or something like that, chances are you may not have all the information. You know, I did this a couple of years ago and freaked the fuck out of my former, uh, my former mother-in-law when she came over one day to, to check, to hang out with my kids. And she found a pile of books on my counter and, you know, a bunch of random books, um, Liberty type stuff, other type stuff. And then mixed in there was a copy of the communist communist manifesto and a copy of Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals. And in typical black and white statism, you know, f fashion, that black and white thinking, Oh my God, you're a communist. What are you doing? No, I just like to know how the other side thinks. But this theory, this, this idea was so foreign to her and I see it in so many other people. It's just like, what are you doing with that? I'm trying to gain a better understanding of where they're coming from. Because how can you bash an idea if you don't actually know what that idea entails? You know, plenty of communists say all the time, oh, it just hasn't been implemented correctly. And most capitalists will laugh at that and say, oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Although the irony there is most of those same capitalists will also say the same thing about capitalism, which may or may not be true, but it's just hysterical that they don't realize that they're accusing communists of doing exactly what they do by saying, well, we haven't had real capitalism. Um, and while I believe free market, like a free market has never really existed uh, on a wide scale, uh, because government regulations always get in the way. You can't make arguments like you wouldn't have all the things you had if it wasn't for capitalism. And we haven't had real capitalism at the same time. doesn't really work. Um, but anyway, I digress. The point is, I think people should uh, branch out and uh, read a little bit more before they go spouting off about these things. Because again, I was one of these people. I used to spout off about communism and how horrible it was and, you know, based on the historical stuff and, and what other people had told me. But I hadn't read the words myself. I couldn't have made the arguments if I, you know, if I was in a debate setting and I was supposed to be defending that position. I couldn't have done it. So I went out and read. And that's what I continue to do. I continue to read 
and, 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 and try to gain information and, and knowledge about different ideologies so I can gain a better understanding. And, and that's why I really enjoyed our, our conversation with Sterling last night. And I really hope uh, that once that comes out, that uh, a, a lot of people will listen to it and hopefully, you know, take it to heart. And if you're somebody who's already trying to build bridges and, and trying to get to a freer world by, you know, being willing to work with people, even if they don't necessarily re- agree with you all the way, even if they agree with you most of the way and you can come to an understanding that, hey, once we get to this, you know, if we're able to get to this point, we may need to go our separate ways. If you can, if, you know, if you can come to that understanding now, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to still work with those people. I have no problem working with people like that, you know? I have, and I, I have very good friends of mine who I disagree with vehemently on certain aspects, even of, of my own philosophy, but we can work together to accomplish other goals. And they're still, you know, they're still not forcing anything upon me. They're still not trying to steal anything from me. Even though, even those friends of mine that others will accuse of being dangerous because they don't respect property rights. So that necessarily means they're going to try to steal your shit. Yeah. Funny thing is, not a single one of them has ever tried to steal my shit. So the moral of the story, folks, is uh, listen a bit, a little bit more. Stop flapping your gums so much. Ah, that's rude. I shouldn't say it like that. Ah, fuck it. Yeah, I should. Because I should take that. I, you know, I needed to take that advice for a long time. And uh, like I've been saying, if your goal is a stateless society... Or even if your goal is as much personal freedom as you can attain right now, cutting out potential allies based on differences of opinion, and even worse, which is all, seems to be more often the case, misconceptions about differences of opinion is not going to get you there. So this has been Jeremy for another episode of Abolitionist Abstractions. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Love, peace, and voluntary interactions for all. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.